my lord. Is that legal? I will make it legal. Today we're going to be showing off a hive mind empire that can do some pretty wacky things. It is, yeah, it's pretty broken. This strategy is absolutely crazy. We're going to be getting absolutely free planetary ascensions on all of our planets. We're going to be getting basically free edicts and a lot of other bonuses besides. Now, if you thought hive minds weren't meta anymore in the current patch because leaders is mainly focused on regular biological empires, now is the time to think again. Let's dive in and play with the Ubaric Hive will be the scaly reptilians I will use today to show off this slightly broken strategy. Now, we've heard a lot recently, especially from myself as well, that hive minds and guest out consciousness is underpowered in the latest patch. That the new DLC Galactic Paragons has provided a lot for bio empires, but not that much for guest outs. Well, thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to prove that slightly wrong. I do want to add that nothing I'm going to do today cannot be done by regular empires. They're able to do this strategy as well. However, you'll be able to do it faster and more efficiently as a hive mind. You can pick any starting civics you will want for this. They won't matter. When we're employing this strategy, which doesn't come early on, it's more of a mid-game strategy, you'll want to have autonomous drones running for sure. Now that's going to change the base unity leader upkeep to two minerals or two food, depending on whether you're a regular biohive or a lithoid hive. We're a regular hive, so that means every one unity of the regular two per level our leaders are, they will instead cost one unity and two food, meaning we're going to get a 50% reduction on the base unity cost of all of our leaders. And oh boy, are we going to have a lot of leaders. Otherwise, I'm taking pooled knowledge here at the start to get my cognitive node experience gain through the roof with plus 25% and additional leader capacity. The other part of this strategy that is very, very useful is Progenitor Hive. This is going to mean all of our leaders are leveling up because they will be passively gaining XP throughout the game. And we want our leaders to reach maximum level as soon as possible. The other important thing about this build is that we are a hive mind, so we'll benefit from minus 25% empire size effect. And that empire size reduction is going to be very, very tasty. Everything else you might want to do is entirely left up to you. The starting things don't really matter that much. We just need to make sure that our leaders do not die in the first 60 to 80 years. That's roughly the time frame we're looking at for getting this build completely rolling. Now, enduring will be quite important for this because it will grant us extra leader lifespan. We can then add to this with other traditions and also possibly getting cybernetic ascension for another plus 40 years. And that should push the death of our main leaders way off into the future. So what you'll want to do is play through the game, normally do everything you would normally do. However, you must make sure you pick up the aptitude tradition. This is going to give us the ability to take rise from the crowd, granting plus one leader pool size. Getting a higher leader pool size will reduce the amount of time it takes to fully achieve this build. On top of that, you'll need to take minute autonomy because we're going to be using the effect here, granting us minus 2% empire size per governor. You might be starting to see where this is going. So we are some way through the game. We have a large thriving empire and we now have empire size. The larger your empire is, the more pops you have, the more systems, the more colonies, the larger this number becomes. At the moment it's 439 for us. We are getting some reductions from various things in the game, but overall we do have empire size. Now that will increase our technology cost and increase our tradition adoption cost. In larger games, you can rack up 1,000, 2,000, even more empire size, and that has prohibitive impacts on our tech. And if you're enjoying this video, please, reduce the size of that like button. Looking here at technology, you can see here that we're getting larger costs from the base of 2400 up quite a bit higher. Now I'm currently on 1.5 uh, tradition and tech cost because I happen to do that in this playthrough. And that's why these numbers are even more exaggerated. So you want to level up all of your leaders, all of your nodes, get them to level 10, and also get all of your regular leaders to level 10. Once you've done that and you're now ready to go, Start every five years recruiting every single governor. And we're just going to keep doing this 
and every time it refreshes, we're going to do it again, because every governor we add reduces our overall empire size by 2%. Meaning once we have 50 governors, we'll be sitting pretty on minus 100% empire size. Once you start recruiting governors in this way, depending on how many you start with, if you've already got four or five or six or more, that will be quite helpful, but it will take you up to 60 years to get all 50 that you need. However, once you get below 100 empire size, you'll already be benefiting from the fact that you do not have any increases to tech or tradition costs from empire size. But the real power here comes when we get to that magic zero. Because at zero, all of our edicts basically become free. They are minimal in cost. This is the base cost only. It will not be modified whatsoever. So I could turn on every single edict here and I would not go anywhere near my maximum of only 185 edict fund. But I've got them all turned on. Beautiful. But what else can we do with this newfound power? Well, whenever we reform our government, and I'm going to be reforming it to take elevational contemplations, you'll see why in a moment, that will also cost absolutely no unity. Beautiful. But there's one more thing we can do, and that is we can increase the power of all of our planets by using planetary ascensions. Planetary ascensions are directly tied into your empire size and do not have a base cost, because I guess you're not meant to have an empire that doesn't exist and has zero size. But we have zero size, so we can upgrade our Ascension tiers absolutely free. That will boost all of the bonuses here that we're getting from our planetary designations. In order to max out planetary Ascensions, you have to take every tradition and get all of the Ascension perks, as well as research the Ascension Theory technology to unlock the last one. When you do that, you'll be able to upgrade every single planet to Ascension Tier 10 absolutely free. Looking at our capital here, we're getting 45% extra resources from jobs, 23 stability, 47 amenities, and a massive reduction in deviancy. These bonuses have been modified further by an increase in planetary ascension effects due to elevational contemplations. And honestly, this is just pretty broken. So our foundry drones here are at the maximum cap here of minus 90%. In fact, we've got a little bit extra because I did take one of the technologies, but basically the maximum cap here in terms of job upkeep reduction. Our capital is the best bonus it can have. Our food worlds are producing an extra 100% agri-drone output per drone on top of all of the other bonuses. There are of course some drawbacks to this strategy. We are massively over our leader capacity. What is that doing for us? Well, we're getting 292% increased upkeep of leaders and 100% less experience due to being over our leader cap. Oh no, anyway. But what does that actually do for us? Well, if we look at our unity income here, that's costing us 130 unity per month, which at this late point in the game would normally be the cost of a single edict. But instead we can activate all of our edicts for free because of this bonus. We're also paying some food costs, 270 food, but we can quite easily produce that with some, and I hate to say it, farming drones on our world. That can easily be paid for with only 10 or 11 farming drones. Any new leaders we have will not go up in level, so you'll want to make sure you have all of the admirals and scientists you need at the max level before you start embarking on this strategy, in my own opinion because that 100% less experience gain is quite punitive. However, if all of your leaders die, you could simply decide, well, my planets are ascended, why not dismiss all of my governors, get rid of them, and then you'll start getting experience once again. Yes, your empire size will go up, but if you want to, you could re-employ this strategy over the next 50 or 60 years and get it back down to zero. Having zero empire size like this is truly broken in the modern version of Stellaris. I think this feature is possibly one of my favorite ones in the latest DLC, Galactic Paragons. If you've enjoyed this meta build video and you'd like to find out how to get almost free ships as a Void Dweller, and also why Void Dwellers are now the most powerful origin in Stellaris, click the video on screen now.